joining us today. We preview uh, Saturday's homecoming game against Miami of Ohio, also the uh, Mid-American Conference opener. Uh, joining Coach Quinn today is senior linebacker Lee Skinner. Uh, Coach, we'll open up the statements, then we'll take questions. Uh, thank you, John, and we appreciate you being here. Um, you know, we had a solid day this past Saturday. Uh, it was good energy and excitement in UB Stadium. Uh, we really appreciate our fans, our family, um, and all our friends that came out there. Uh, what was cool about uh, Saturday is that we had an opportunity to have uh, Brandon Oliver on campus. Uh, saw Stephen Means come back, and then uh, my first time meeting Wade Phillips. So it was kind of a neat day, plus uh, being able to walk off that field the way we like to walk off that field. And we got to continue to develop as a team to be able to do, do that again this uh, Saturday. Uh, defensively, we hit all our goals, uh, did a great job. They set a new UB record, uh, holding their offense to only three completions on the day, uh, which is a tremendous uh, um, you know, testament to the coaches and our players. Uh, kept them uh, to seven points and 215 yards. We've been really challenging our defense, and, and I thought they showed up big. We took the ball away twice. We had a huge goal line stance and then took the ball away. Max Parisi did a great job. Uh, Adam Rand forcing a fumble and Jarrett recovering, and then along with Max's uh, big goal line stance, uh, Dwilly Striggles recovered it. Uh, this gentleman sitting to my right, Lee Skinner, has continued to give us great leadership, um, and his playmaking ability has been very, very consistent over his five years he's been here. Um, offensively, less metal errors, uh, value the ball, did a great job in that aspect. Uh, we ran the ball with more efficiency. Uh, offensive line, tight ends, fullbacks all did a real nice job. Uh, Joe had a really solid day. You know, he rushed for uh, one touchdown and threw for three, so he had four on the, on the day. Um, Devin Hughes, uh, added two touchdowns on his own along with Ronnie Willoughby. But the big connection and, and set another UB record on Saturday was the was the 92-yard uh, touchdown pass that Joe threw to Devin, which was a highlight of uh, Saturday. I was really pleased with that. Uh, special teams, we had two poor PAT snaps, which concerns me. Uh, those players are going to have to respond this week. We've challenged them. Uh, that's totally unacceptable. They understand that and uh, certainly be excited to see those kids really step up. We won the hidden yardage battle and uh, and also the field position, which was huge. And I think when you look at what Tyler Grassman was able to do, our punter, he had five punts, one right at the 10-yard line and four others inside the 10. Uh, he has been uh, outstanding. He's, he's a great player. Uh, very, very pleased with his production. I think the other area that I felt really good about was our punt return unit. You know, we had a nice big 27-yarder that set up a touchdown, and then uh, we were able to take the ball away on another situation where they mishandled the snap. The snap ricocheted off their personal protector, uh, but we were able to um, to get that ball, and then that set up a second touchdown for us. Uh, Miami, Ohio, uh, certainly every game brings on a new and exciting challenge. This one will be no different. Uh, they are coached better. Uh, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some quality opponents um, in their four previous uh, contests. Uh, this past weekend, we saw them, uh, watched every play. Uh, what a heck of a ball game they had against Cincinnati. And I've had the pleasure of coaching in that uh, matchup game three years uh, when I was at Cincinnati. Uh, so I could certainly tell you um, – it's going to be a. It's going to take everything we have to earn a victory Saturday homecoming uh, at UB Stadium. Kickoff at 3:30, so we're going to be excited about the opportunity to open up league play at home. Um, and I, with that, I'll open up to any questions you may have. Coach, uh, just Chuck Martin. Can you talk about your relationship with him? You coached with him together for four years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, you know, have you two stayed in contact at all? And what do you think about what he brings to the table as a coach? Uh, well, we're friends, and uh, not just competitors. You know, we're going to be competitors, too, and, and Chuck is as competitive as a, as a person that I've met, and I'm very uh, pleased. My youngest, or excuse me, my oldest son used to babysit for him uh, back when we were at Grand Valley. So uh, we know their family uh, very, very well. Um, very happy to see his career. We were together at Grand Valley, won a couple national championships together, and then uh, when we went up to Central Michigan, Brian and I, uh, Chuck took over the Grand Valley program at that point as head coach and did an outstanding job. I mean, his, his record speaks uh, for the kind of quality of coach um, and the way he uh, gets his kids to play, and we certainly see that on film. Uh, so this is, you know, 
we've we've totally disregarded what's happened in the past. You know, we know that they're going to come in and they're going to play well. Uh, I think a lot of their uh, um, a lot of their things that they're doing right now is a testament to him and his coaching staff. So that'll be a great test for us as we open up league play against Miami. Their offense has been really shaky in the past, but the new quarterback, uh, obviously, he's got ability. What mm-hmm. do you, you know, just what do you see in his style and what stands yep. out about his play? Right. They're throwing a little bit more than the run of the ball. Um, but uh, Hendricks, their quarterback, uh, had a chance to get to know that young man uh, back when I was coaching at Cincinnati. Uh, he's a competitor, went to Notre Dame, uh, had an opportunity to, to go and, you know, and uh, transfer to Miami of Ohio and get his chance to play. And uh, I think just, you know, each and every game, each and every rep, you see him getting better. He's more comfortable with the system. Uh, he's got a couple nice receivers uh, to get the ball to. And uh, certainly they're, you know, they're going to be a handful for our defense. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see us uh, defend them, you know, when they're putting the ball in the air. Um, and then also when they're putting the ball on the ground. So uh, we know that they're going to be uh, – they're going to be well prepared, and uh, we've got to do what we do, and that's play great, fundamentally sound defensive football. Pursue the ball, tackle well, you know, compete when the ball's in the air. That's a big emphasis this week, as it's been every week, um, is to get that ball, uh, you know, take away a couple uh, as they're in the air. But, you know, he's very accurate, he's more poised, and uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us to defend him. Coach? Uh, any update on Jordan Johnson and Devin Campbell? Mm-hmm. Uh, Devin will be back. Jordan won't be back this Saturday. Any timetable on Jordan or what the injury was? Uh, j- right now, it's you know he's not going to be able to play this week. Uh, hopefully, you know he'll progress and we'll get a look at you know each and every single week. You know where he's at. I don't think it should last very long, but uh, it's going to take him out of this week for sure. Uh, potentially another week after that, but uh, hopefully it won't be anything beyond that. And we're good to get Devin back now. How close was Devin playing uh, last Saturday? Or was it never really? Well, I think they, you know, they made the right choice. Tough decision to keep him out, but uh, you know, it was the right choice. Uh, but you know, he would have loved to gone in there and play. But uh, we'll get him back Saturday, and he'll have to make up for two games in one uh, when we play this Saturday. Thoughts on maybe not having him on kickoff returns because he's coming off the injury, because you need him maybe a little more at running back? Is that going to the process, thought process? Not at all, Paul. Okay. Devin Campbell's going to play as, as much as uh, he's able to give us those those great uh, con, you know, competitive plays as he's, he's shown us. So we're going to put him on kickoff return. We're going to put him on offense. You know, he's on punt return, you know, as a blocker and a mug guy and, a, you know, and a blocker in terms of blocking kicks. So we're, we're placing him in some very important uh, positions for us. So we're excited about seeing him getting back on the field. Lee, how much do you look forward to opening MAC play and kind of starting the road to, to one of your big goals, which is a conference championship? Oh, we're really excited. We couldn't be any more excited to start our MAC play with Miami. Um, they're a really great team. They look really good on film. They're much improved from last year. I think they're, you know, they've really changed their identity, and we're really excited about that. They have some key players on offense that we've we've seen on film and be able to identify. And I think they're, we're seeing really good play out of their quarterback and their tight end, and one of their receivers, number nine. So we're really excited to. See a good matchup. Is there any sense that this is when the real season starts for you guys? Uh, similar opponents now. These are the guys you play every single year. Oh, uh, most definitely. Uh, I think any game is crucially important, but when you open up MAC play, that's when um, that's that's when the championships on the line, and that's what the focus is, and that's what everybody understands. Lee, do you feel like last week's game moved you guys as a defensive unit a little closer to where you guys were for most of the year? I mean, you're pretty confident about about finding your stride as a group? Definitely, definitely. I think that uh, really really set forth what we're going to do for the rest of the year. I think that it just improved our execution. I think that gave us more confidence and it really gave our defense more of an identity. I think the first couple of games you see us progressing, getting better each game, and third game, fourth game, you see us really starting to put things together and really find our identity on defense. Did it, has it, was it a little more of a learning process defensively replacing the guys that left and the roles that they had and guys like you kind of stepping into bigger roles and younger guys coming up, did that take a little longer than maybe you might have even thought it would? Well, I think it's like that every year. Um, Every year you have to find your identity. Every year a new team has a different level of confidence, a different level of playmakers. uh, There's there's different levels on each team. And I think each year is a new team, and this year it's, it's different than last year, yes, but it was it harder? No. 
I think we have a tighter unit. We have more depth. We have uh, more guys that are ready to make plays. And it's not as much of a everyone's looking towards one guy to make a play. You know, I, everybody picked up that slack. So I think that's the difference this year. Coach, I know it's a new year, new team. Uh, things changed. But last year, over 300 yards rushing against this team. Um, same mindset, you pound the ball, uh, and then that can open up the pass. Or, you know, is it just kind of a new a new game? You don't really look at what you did last year. Well, we certainly – you know, don't look at what we did last year against them because they do have a different structure and defensively um, that we're going to face Saturday. But from our standpoint as an offensive uh, unit, absolutely. You know, we got to control the line of scrimmage. You know, if you run the ball well and you're effective, uh, certainly they're going to commit another hat down there and it's going to give us some of the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Uh, Joe has demonstrated it. He can get the ball distributed to a number of different receivers out there, which will give us some opportunities to be explosive. Um, and then, as you know, you know, we live in the North Atlantic, so, you know, it's those conditions are going to start to change a little bit. And, you know, we've got to be able to run the ball. And if you can stop the run and run the ball uh, every single game you got a shot at winning Jeff uh, Boise he saw a lot of snaps Boise Ross mm -hmm. at corner just how did you think he fared uh well, uh, talking to Eric Lewis, my secondary coach, Boise Ross has uh, really uh, stepped into that role. If you watch some of the plays, uh, just, you know, he's tackling. I think the thing that I was very impressed with is he hasn't had a lot of work on tackling, and he tackled extremely well. And he went in there fearless and, you know, with a competitive spirit uh, for the team. And, you know, he's enjoying himself, and, you know, he knows how important he is to the, uh, you know, development of our defense, especially in the back end. So, you know, overall, I would say uh, very favorable to what we saw last week. Now, as the competition gets better, more challenging formations and, you know, those kinds of things, it, it'll be interesting to see how his progress comes along. Can you talk about Adam Redden's performance Saturday and just what he means to the defense as a whole? Well, as I said last week, you know, he – or after the game, you know, he's he brought a lot of intensity, as Lee does, and a lot of the leadership on that side of the ball. But Adam was making a very strong point all week about taking the ball away uh, to all the players on the defensive side, and that was very evident by his own actions. And he took the ball away. And he was flying around. You know, he continues to make plays, and he's a really talented football player. You saw him come off the edge a couple times. You know, we're going to need that kind of play out of him. And, uh, you know, it's very uh, – it's inspirational. You know, he's just a kid who plays with a lot of heart, a lot of passion. He's true blue. He's all here. He's a UB guy. And uh, it's really kind of cool to see how well he's coming along as he continues to, to lead that defensive side of the ball. Hey, Lee, the, the MAC is such an offensive conference. It's kind of always been that way. You know, yet you guys last year played very good defense. You almost get the sense sometimes that teams – get frustrated when they're playing you because they're not scoring 30 points a game, which seems to always happen every week. I mean, do you ever feel that out on the field that a team kind of doesn't know what to do because things aren't going as easy as they usually do? Definitely. I think we practice throughout the week to see a certain formation and see certain sets, and then you see a team get flustered when that doesn't go the right way, and then they have to make adjustments. So I think that is really, really exciting to get into MAC play because you watch four games, you watch a couple games on a team, and you see their progress, and – you know, you can get to see some of the different sets they like to get into. And Is that a point maybe in a game where you kind of know that maybe you've got them a little bit when you sense some of those things that, that, that aren't going well for an opposition? Well, it, it, it feels good to have that, that sense of confidence that they have to change their game plan. But, you know, a team's never really out. You know, it's a long game. There's four quarters. So I think you always have to be ready to adapt and, and, uh, and adjust to a new look. Coach, a lot of the time you come in and you talk about challenging guys, having guys respond. After Joe threw three picks against Army, he came in here and said that wasn't going to happen again. In back-to-back -back weeks, he's came out with solid performances and taking care of the ball. Mm -hmm. How much do you appreciate that, not only out of any player, but especially your leader at quarterback? Uh, Joe Licata is as responsible of a young man that I've ever been around. You know, he cares deeply about this team, and his play is important to him. Um, and Alex Wood's done an outstanding job, and it's a combination. You know, I mean, the young man uh, definitely is a con competitor. And when you throw a pick, it's certainly a, to a competitor, uh, it's completely unacceptable. You don't have to get on a guy like that. You know, basically he knows, uh, you know, what he did and what he needs to do to improve upon that. And he takes a lot of pride in that. And we're going to need to continue to do that. Joe's, you know, one of the top performing quarterbacks right now. 
uh, in the league and, and one of the top in the nation. And, you know, he's got a lot of guys around him that helps him. So, you know, it's been good to have the, the offensive coordinator, Alex Wood, coaching the quarterbacks. And so they're together every single day. And I think that's really benefited Joe. But uh, he certainly, um, you know, he knows that, that that's a big part of how, you know, we're going to move our offense. We can't be turning the doggone ball over. And uh, he's been a big part of the reason why we've had, you know, a good solid day Saturday. And we're going to need to continue to see him grow. And Lee, you've been with him. You've been here during his time, too. How much have you seen him kind of grow, not only on the field, but in the locker room? I mean, obviously, he's the captain and things like that. He's grown a lot. I think um, his his level of play on the field is matched by his his leadership off the field. And Joe's a strong presence in the locker room. He's a strong presence on the field. And I think when you see him play well, it's it's just an, a, an example of how well he, he leads the team and how well you know guys look up to him and, and things of that nature. Jeff, the uh, Dwelly you know, had, some, had a rough opener, but he actually had two or three good mm-hmm. pass breakups against Baylor. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, where do you feel he is, uh, Dwelly Strickland? Oh, yeah. You know, Dwelly's a guy that we, we lean very heavily on, you know, and he's certainly somebody out there every single day, you know, working to improve his technique, his fundamentals, you know, his pursuit, um, you know, being able to play, you know, be a very competitive guy in the right position when the ball's in the air, you know, and that's a, certainly a big part of uh, where that back end is, you know. Is whichever way Whitney, Courtney, and Dewilly go as the three seniors on the back end is the way the our back our entire defense goes, you know, and that's important uh, that those guys continue to grow. And Dewilly's going to be somebody that we're going to lean heavily on uh, as teams try to throw the ball on us. So uh, it's Courtney, it's Dewilly, you know, it's Boise Ross. Those are the three corners right now that are going to be out there, and uh, we're going to we're going to be excited about seeing each of those guys uh, continue to improve to help us. You know, obviously Miami can sling it around. But what mm-hmm. have you seen uh, from your edge rush that makes you feel you've got enough edge rush to get the job done in the man? Well, as much as it's the edge rush, is is the contain. Uh, this quarterback will take off. Uh, Hendricks will take off and convert on uh, some of those key downs, you know, especially third down. So uh, we need to put pressure on them, you know, with our three-man, four-man, you know, and and some of our different uh, pressure packages that will bring more than that. But, uh, you know, I feel good about Brandon Crawford. I feel good about Sicoli. You know, those guys are going to get some opportunities along with Ted Roy Lynch. Uh, opportunity, you know, Jarrett Franklin, Lee, you saw Lee come up big uh, on Saturday. He's going to have some opportunities to do the same thing along with Stockman. So uh, it'll be, uh, it's 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 going to be a well-devised game plan. Uh, we have to have a great day today so everybody understands they're a little different uh, because they run some no-back with a tight end attached. So their six-man protection scheme is with an attached tight end with the five linemen as opposed to the five linemen with a back in the backfield. Um, so we have that's not as common um, as, as you may think. But so they go empty a fair amount. They do. Yeah, there's, yeah they're, they're, it's not their primary formation. But we're going to see about five or six different formational looks that will defend all things that we've seen. But, you know, we, we need to hit home. You know, certainly we've got to be able to put pressure on him with coverage and with, you know, some of our stunts and, and, and blitzes that we'll have dialed up. Lee, did you get – Dayton's only an hour from Miami. Did you get recruited by Miami? No, no I did not. How about any of them? Did you visit any of the Ohio schools? Um, no, not particularly. I, I, t- I talked to a number of coaches, but uh, Buffalo was my only offer. So right. that's really the only school I had serious contact with. Right. The, the I mean – you know, I mean, it's only an hour away. Obviously, you've been a starter here on a top-ranked defense. They were all in 12. They made a mistake. I mean, do you uh, – does it still, even though you're a senior, motivate you at all to go back and play these school, uh, school like Miami? You know, I really don't look at it that way. Um, I really look at it more of as just an opportunity from Buffalo, and I'm really fortunate to, to be blessed with an opportunity that Buffalo gave me. I think that's more motivating than, you know, Miami not offering me because, you know, there's – 128 Division One teams, or, so it, I think it's more motivating that I'm so fortunate to be at Buffalo. The best school in the country you came to, so I mean there was no other options out there. Uh, Does that ever prompt you to look back a little bit, Lee, in the off season or whatever, and think that I only had one offer, so 
you know, and, and I've let, been second on the team in tackles. I've started every game that I've ever been. You've turned it into a very nice career. Uh, do you ever kind of reflect a little bit on what the journey has been for you? Oh, definitely. You definitely do. You definitely look back and uh, you see where you came from. You know where your hometown is. And I think it's just it's fun to look back and see, you know, hey, this is my only offer. I better make the most of it. And I think that's something I'll never forget. Khalil Mack only had one offer, too. So. That's right. Hey, <laughs> it's uh, not a bad There's plenty group. of players that are playing, uh, you know, that were big-time players. Uh, that only had one offer, and that's all it takes. You know, you can have 30, but you can only pick one anyway. So, that's a big, uh, that's a big point of what Lee's doing, and you know, I he, always appreciate that. Surprised you at all? I mean, or, you know, in the, in his production and his ability, when you saw him wrestling and decided that he can make a good football player here? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in never underestimate the spirit of a human being, and I saw that spirit when I was watching Lee, and certainly I see it now. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that he's been able to get himself to this point. Uh, what's exciting is the fact that, you know, you take a lot of pride as a coach when you see that in a young man and when you give him all that encouragement and belief and then they develop into where he is. And we were just working on one of Lee's uh, classroom assignments before we came here. He was interviewing some of the coaches and myself included. Uh, a little bit about uh, some different things about motivation and leadership and things like that. Uh, it just goes to show there's a lot of great kids out there, and if you do a good job really uh, learning about who they are and what they want to accomplish and you have those things here at the University at Buffalo, uh, it's, it's, it's a really cool opportunity to see that happen right right here. And Khalil was another example. You know, Brandon Oliver's another example. Lee Skinner's another example of that. And there's plenty of uh, – there's plenty to learn from that. So any kid out there looking and uh, wants a chance to come, uh, we certainly have the right place for them to grow and develop. What was that? Because that wasn't a journalism interview in class. <laughs> no. Was that, was no. A bad business? Or a it was a, yeah, it was a – for business. It was a piece on employee engagement. Coach and leader available for one-on-one to be Good job. Yeah, thank you.